second warning. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready. AccuWeather, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Adam Del Rosso with AccuWeather. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Wonderful. We are ready to go on our end. Do a little three, two, one countdown. Three, two, one. Joining us all the way from space on board the International Space Station is NASA astronaut Dr. Jessica Watkins. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited. I'll start with an easy question. This is your first time in space. How is it? What's it been like? Oh man, space is as awesome as they all said it would be. Um, it has been um, such a joy to be up here with first with our uh, Crew 3 uh, colleagues and then um, now um, with my Crew 4 colleagues, uh, Chell Lindgren, Samantha Cristoforetti, and Bob Hines. Um, we're just having a great time working hard and uh, just enjoying the, the environment. As the first black woman on an extended ISS mission, what does that accomplishment mean to you? Yeah, and you know, I think that it is an important uh, tribute to the long legacy of um, black astronauts that have come before me, um, as well as a testament to the exciting future ahead um, as we start to look towards the moon and Mars um, and all of the exciting things that NASA is doing in the future. So um, I'm just honored to be a small part of that legacy. Growing up, did you always think about going to space? When did you determine that you wanted to become an astronaut? Yeah, this has been a dream of mine for a pretty long time. Um, I think I was around the age of nine or 10 when I first uh, vocalized a, a, a dream to, to be an astronaut one day. Um, never really thought that it would, would truly happen. So just uh, so lucky and, and uh, blessed and honored to be here today. So this is a six month mission that you're on the ISS for. How did you prepare for long duration space flight, both physically and mentally? What all was entailed in that training? Yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head that a large part of our training involves um, the f kind of physical aspect. Um, so while we're up here, we exercise every day. Um, we have um, exercise equipment that allows us to put load on so that we can um, do weight training as well as cardio exercises um, on, on a treadmill and a bicycle. Um, and that's really important to help us um, maintain our health, maintain our um, bone mass um, while we're um, in, in microgravity. Um, the microgra effects on microbiota the effects of microgravity on the human body um, can be significant. So we have these countermeasures in place. Uh, so part of that training on the ground was to ensure that we were coming in with a good baseline and um, that we're ready to um, perform all the tasks that we need to while we're up here. Of course, lots of our other training involves um, systems and equipment as well. Um, so we learn about the systems of the International Space Station, um, where we are now, um, as well as the um, outside of the space station. So doing extra 
vehicular activity training or spacewalk training. Um, in addition to our training on the uh, SpaceX Dragon vehicle, which was the launch vehicle that got us up here and will get us home um, in six months, and um, also interacting with our international partners. I'm, I'm standing here in the Columbus module, which is owned by the European Space Agency, which is the agency that uh, my crewmate Samantha Christopher Reddy is a part of. So it's a really integrated training to get us prepared and ready for this mission. On Earth, you're a geologist. Is that a part of what you're working on during the six-month mission? Yes, it's certainly something I'm really excited about uh, being up here. Being able to see the Earth from the perspective that the ISS offers is just really unique um, and really um, really a, a, a very cool opportunity for a geologist like me. Um, I really enjoy being able to look out at the um, features and processes that we can see on Earth, and in particular being able to apply those to planetary processes and features. Uh, so we can kind of use Earth as an analog or laboratory for what we see See on other planets and learn more about those other planets as well as about our own Earth in the process. So I look forward to doing some of that while I'm up here. You mentioned this a little bit already. Looking ahead, you are a part of the Artemis program that is going to return humans to the moon in 2025. Are you excited about the possibility that you could be the one to walk on the moon in three years? Yes, it's certainly a very exciting prospect um, that um, that someone in our office, one of my friends, um, will be walking on the moon in, in short order here. Um, it is just a ex super exciting time to be a part of human spaceflight. We have so many things that we're working. Um, our commercial crew partnerships, as I mentioned, the one um, that enabled us to get up here on the SpaceX Dragon, um, as well as the uh, uh, Boeing as well. Um, we'll be having the OFT2 launch next week, so we're super excited about welcoming uh, OFT2 on board. Um, and then also thinking about our uh, future ventures, so thinking about Artemis and um, Artemis 1 here coming up this year and the um, ensuing missions to follow. So lots to look forward to. Dr. Jessica Watkins, congratulations on this accomplishment. We thank you for being here and giving us your time. Have fun up there and safe travels back home. All right, thank you so much for your time. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our AccuWeather portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KMGH-TV. Thank you. Jessica, okay, Station, this is Jessica Crawford with KMGH-TV. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. All right, thank you so much for speaking with us today, Jessica. I'm Jessica Crawford with Denver 7. Uh, so, your home state of Colorado. Uh, first of all, I just want to hear about that feeling of being aboard that spacecraft, moving through space, you know, making it on, on the way to the ISS. Yeah, so um, I believe your question was about what is the, the it, was it like being in space? Was the space environment like? And you know, for me, the the one of the coolest parts, one of the most uh, fun things, most challenging as well, um, since getting up here, was getting used to uh, kind of thinking about the world in 3D, um, learning to move in 3D. Um, and it's interesting, you know, your brain kind of adapts. Um, it's been amazing to see how quickly uh, myself and my crewmate Bob Hines, who is also a space rookie, um, how we've, we've learned to um, translate using our hands and, um, and learn to think in three dimensions. Uh, so it's been really fun. Okay. Uh, can you talk about uh, just the gravity of this being kind of a test run for a return to the moon and how that's so important in moving us forward in space exploration? Thank you. 
Yeah, absolutely. So the, the International Space Station, where we, we are now, um, is a national laboratory and we use that national laboratory platform to do lots of um, demonstrations and uh, of both technology and science as well as research on the human body to help enable us to understand what we what steps we need to do and and how we are going to apply and adapt um, the processes that we already have in place for our future exploration and particularly the moon and eventually on to mars um, so a lot of the kind of robotic exploration that we do um, i'm looking across i'm standing in the um, columbus module right now and i'm looking across to the the gem the uh, japanese module and um, I see two robots that are uh, free floating and finding their way. Um, and so even that kind of robotics test is going to help enable us in the future um, with um, our ability to use robot robotics to help uh, help us with our operations. So I'm um, looking forward to the the outcomes of this Astro B. Um, uh, operation here across the way. But in general, um, lots of applications here on ISS. The, again, the, the science that we do on um, ourselves as humans, understanding the long-term effects of spaceflight and um, long-duration spaceflight on the human body. Um, as well as um, the robotics and the uh, thinking about the radiation protection as well. So there are lots of applications that we're doing here that will take us forward into the future. Jessica, did you take anything uh, personal, special with you up there? Yes. So, of course, I, I brought lots of uh, plenty of photos of my family and friends and um, those kinds of personal effects. Um, but then also for me, I'm a geologist by by trade. And so, of course, I had to bring up some rocks with me. That's awesome. Um, can you talk about the anticipation of doing a spacewalk? Yes, so we currently have um, a couple of spacewalks on uh, currently scheduled for the towards the end of our mission. Um, those two spacewalks will be to um, go outside and upgrade the solar arrays um, that we have outside. We've actually already performed this this type of um, EVA in uh, different locations, and this will be upgrading a, a, a new solar array um, and installing a modification kit to enable that. Um, and we have been trained. Um, we do lots of, of training on the ground in our neutral buoyancy laboratory. So it's this, uh, our, our giant pool where we can um, don our spacesuits and um, perform our, our EVAs, learn, train our EVAs underwater. Um, so that has been a, a large part of our training. So we are ready and prepared and excited uh, to go out the door if the opportunity comes. Talk about something that has surprised you about your stay on the ISS. You know, most things about uh, about this new environment are, are surprising. Um, I think for one, for me, the, the uh, most surprising thing has just been getting used to uh, floating and learning to kind of translate and think in three dimensions, uh, use all of the volume, all of the space, climb on the ceilings. Um, it's been really fun, uh, but, but also challenging and surprising in its own way as well. Can you tell us about some of the research you've been conducting Yes, absolutely. Um, so we do lots of different kinds of scientific research um, on board here. Um, so we um, do physical science, so looking at um, fluids and um, combustion science. Um, we do biology, so looking at um, cell and plant and tissue growth. Um, we have a, a um, experiment called X-Roots that's looking into um, plant root growth that will help enable us to um, provide options and solutions in the future when we look towards uh, future exploration further into the solar system. Um, we do lots of um, earth and space science, which of course is near and dear to my heart, um, as well as human research. Um, so lots of um, research to understand the impacts of long duration space flight on and the microgravity environment on the human body, uh, again with future applications as well. Uh, can you give us a glimpse of life inside there? Like what are you eating? What are you drinking? How do you sleep?
Yeah, um, we we are honestly pretty spoiled up here. We have we have lots of amenities um, and and access to lots of um, uh, you know good food and um, you know things that help us relax. Um, so we have. Um, uh, for our food, we have lots of choices that um, a whole a whole team of people on the ground um, help put together for us. We have a, a food lab down at the Johnson Space Center that uh, package up all of our create and then package up all of our food for us. Um, so lots of yummy options there. Um, most of our food we can either rehydrate, so we can add water to it, um, or we can stick it in a food warmer and um, it warms the food up. Um, so we have options there as well as uh, shelf stable food. Um, living and sleeping, um, we each have our own crew quarters where we can, uh, we each have our sleeping bags and um, that is, it's where we sleep. Um, it's pretty fun to sleep in microgravity. Um, you just kind of curl up in your sleeping bag and then just float. Um, it's actually a pretty neat sensation. How cool. Uh, have you had a favorite space meal so far? Hmm, good question. I would have to say probably taco night, which is a good portion of the nights here. Um, everything tastes good in a tortilla. That is so true. You're talking to some Colorado students next week. What's something that you want them to take away from that conversation? Yeah, certainly. As I kind of put myself back in their shoes as a as a student in Colorado, um, I would just encourage them to dream big. Um, you never know when when they your, those dreams may may come to pass, um, and to really just continue to find something that they are passionate about and just pursue that. Pursue that relentlessly. Find mentors who will help you pursue it. Find opportunities um, that will help engage you in it, um, and just uh, stay stay steady on that path. Can you talk about the training that goes into preparing for a spacewalk? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we train at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab in laboratory in Houston, Texas. Uh, the is a kind of giant pool about uh, 40 feet deep, I believe. And it has a mock-up of the entire outside of the International Space Station with all the handrails in the correct place and um, everything in the right orientation. And so we are able to um, don our spacesuits um, and uh, go underwater um, in order to kind of mimic the microgravity environment as much as we can. Um, and we um, can perform our EVAs, learn, learn how to do EVA tasks, and kind of work through the, the processes and procedures for specific EVAs um, that we will be performing. And so that enables us to have a good understanding of what to expect um, when, we, when we get out, out the door. I'm told that the, the training is really super excellent. Um, and once you're out there, it feels very similar to being in the NBL, with the exception of the fact that the Earth is at your feet. Do you have any message to your fellow Coloradans, specifically maybe the people in your uh, in the town of Lafayette? Yeah, to, to everyone in, in Colorado and Lafayette in particular, just uh, say hello and um, thank you so much for everything that you've done to help uh, prepare me and um, encourage me and support me um, on this journey. And uh, definitely take a piece of you with me and hope to represent you well. So much for your time, Jeff. Stay safe out there. Thank you so much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from AccuWeather and KMGH TV. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.